Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Over the years on this channel, we've been undergoing somewhat of an enlightenment. We often look back at the linchpin entities of science fiction while foregoing any preconceived notions about them that have been ingrained in our psyches via the whims of the masses, and cast them in new light based on uncritical but based analysis 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 analysi of them. The conclusion? Well, usually the humans are the good guys and the creepy blue aliens suck. Is it honest? Not always. Are we idiots? Very much so. I mean, if you spent any time with us off camera, you would be shocked and appalled at the level of idiocy we display. I don't know the plural for analysis. British Ben thinks murder is okay, and Alan just usually drools. But we carry on for the sake of righteous iconoclasm, to smash the virtuous ideas that people hold so dear about their dearest movies, and some others that nobody likes. Aliens, Avatar, Ender's Game, we've pretty much covered it all. And yet somehow Small Soldiers has never entered the fray. We only even have a handful of references to the film on this channel. This movie has always been in the back of my mind. I just never saw fit to make a video about it, but I knew eventually it'd have to happen. Now up until recently, I hadn't seen this movie in, oh, somewhere about 20 years or so. It's just not one you throw on time and time again. Don't get me wrong, I do remember really liking the film when it came out. It's just that it's more of a kids movie, so it doesn't really hold up for adults. That said, now having finally seen it for the first time in my adult life, it's pretty good, especially when compared to other kids' films of the time. I think I said in another video that the best way to describe the movie would be to say that it's as if Toy Story and Avatar had a baby. I mean, Chip Hazard and Miles Quatrich are the same character, basically, though there are plenty of examples of straight-edge, hard-ass, kick-ass platoon leaders with strong chins in film. Well, before we really get into things here, I suppose I should take a second to give you all a refresher on the plot of the movie. Basically, there's this big corporate defense contractor called Globotech Industries, which builds things to kill people and sells them to the military for billions of dollars. The executives at Globotech Industries come to figure that since war is fun and awesome, they could probably make a killing off selling their merchandise to kids. So Globotech acquires the Heartland Toy Company, and CEO Gil Mars orders two of his top designers to develop actual live-action toys that can move and fight on their own. Desperate to meet what is an unreasonable request based on contemporary technology, the more unscrupulous of the two designers, Larry Benson, secretly has an advanced computer chip designed for use in military weaponry implanted into the commando elite, a squad of gruff muscle-bound super soldiers, and the Gorgonites, a warrior race native to the lost island of Gorgon, thus giving both factions life, to some degree. The toys are then shipped to stores all over the country in preparation to be released for sale to the masses. Before their debut, however, young Alan Abernathy, whose family runs a small toy shop called The Inner Child, gets his hands on a set of the new line of toys from Heartland slash Globotech. He puts the toys in his family's shop for sale, and long story short, when he's away, they break free and go to war with the Gorgonites and their allies, as well as with Alan's family and that of his neighbors, the Fimples, which includes his love interest, Christy. By the way, super creepy love triangle in the film. I mean, Alan looks like he's 13, Christy looks 16, and her boyfriend Brad seems like he's 26. Okay, check that, he's about 32. But hey, weird crap happens in small town America. Am I right, my small towners out there? By the way, I did check the ages and everything is kosher. It just doesn't seem that way. Now, all I really remember of my reaction to the film on first viewing as a child was that I thought the drama was gripping, the commando elite were maniacal cold-blooded killers, the Gorgonites were peace-loving honorable warriors, and Kirsten Dunst was the love of my life. So how did my latest viewing of the film change my perspective of the story and its characters? Well, it served to be somewhat vindicating of the commando elite. But no, this isn't some hoorah, the humans were right story. Actually, quite the opposite. The commandos are toys after all, and toys are not human beings, no matter how much you love your die-cast action figures, you nerds. That includes me. I don't actually have anything against the Gorgonites. They're pretty chill. Too chill, actually. They basically just stand around in the movie perfectly content to cede the battle to the commando elite and just live in peace. Besides monsters shouldn't be hiding, you should be out fighting commandos. We would lose. It is what we were programmed to do. Yeah, the loser attitude is a bit depressing, but you have to understand, they've been miscast as noble warriors. They're more like pothead cultists, who are apathetic about larger societal issues and just want to find their lost homeworld of Gorgon. And what's beyond that? I don't know. Hmm. Gorgon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Gorgon refers to more of a transcendent plane of existence that is reached partly by boat and partly by ingesting copious amounts of DMT. The Gorgonites are less native tribe and more Joe Rogan. 
they're hippies with muscles who are all about peace, love, and ayahuasca. As a matter of fact, given their leader Archer is so loopy throughout the movie, I'm inclined to say that he might actually need an intervention. The toys are the Gorgonites. There are no more Gorgonites. Shh. I mean, he was gone. Nonetheless, the Gorgonites were good, but that doesn't necessarily mean the Commando Elite were bad. Okay, the hostage video, that was kind of ISIS-like. But hey, we all have our ISIS moments sometimes. I'm sure every one of us has either acted as the morality police towards a friend or cut someone's head off. We've all done it. Anyway, on my latest viewing, I really couldn't see the Commando Elite as the bad guys. When it comes to the plot of Small Soldiers, I'm not sure that the Commando Elite didn't respond appropriately to the circumstances around them. First off, they were thrust into hostile territory. They knew nothing of this small town or its layout and with a known enemy in the Gorgonites in their vicinity, they had to be on their guard and ready for action if they wanted to survive. And I can't blame them for assuming the humans are their enemies either. I mean, what were the Commandos supposed to think when they saw that this young human child, Alan, was cavorting with Archer, the leader of the enemy force? Alan, friend of Archer, defender of all Gorgonites, keeper of Encarta. Keeper of Encarta? And yes, I know that the Gorgonites are peaceful potheads, but that's not what the Commandos were programmed to believe. We don't actually know what the history of these factions might reveal. Perhaps it was the Commandos who saw the Gorgonites as genocidal monsters. They might have had knowledge of specific events, albeit fictional ones, in which the Gorgonites committed murderous acts. Now, you might argue that the chips and the toys allowed them to learn, so they should have been able to adjust to their surroundings and recognize that both the humans and Gorgonites meant them no harm. However, I'm not so sure that the actions of their assumed enemies signaled peace. For one thing, Archer spouted a lot of threatening warlike pronouncements. Beware, there will be no mercy. I mean, what was Chip Hazard supposed to think when he heard the Gorgonites utter such things? I mean, Archer also kept going around saying this. The Commando Elite are the mortal enemy of the Gorgonites. The of the Those are fighting words. And I know that in context, it's possible that Archer was speaking about the threat to Gorgonites that the Commando Elite posed, but I mean, he's really got to be more specific and clarify these things moving forward. The Gorgonites are just not great communicators, period. What are you looking at? <laughs> they badly need to hire professional spokespeople. Then there's the humans, who were perhaps the worst players in all of this. I mean, the Commandos hadn't attempted any real violence against the humans at all, aside from firing a harmless warning shot early on. Civilians, declare your allegiance. And then Alex shoved one of them in the garbage disposal. I mean, we should think about this from their point of view. Okay, fair. They were about to drop a Gorgonite down the disposal. But the point is, the Commandos only amped up their violence against the humans after being brutalized by them. I mean, Christy is a goddamn psycho. Look at her face as she smashes them to bits. Now that's maniacal evil. She even attacked the poor things with a lawnmower. That doesn't jive with my sense of international human rights law or any known code of warfare. On the other hand, the commandos were pretty humane in their treatment of humans up until a point, never doing more than just tying them up. I mean, that's pretty legit. They restrained their POWs without harming them. The commandos were pretty ethical, though yes, the warrantless wiretapping did bother me. But if that's their worst crime against humanity, then it's not unlike anything we don't already do to ourselves. Oh, and they did use some chemical warfare as well, but such action was confined to specific targets and caused no serious injury. And moreover, the commandos were admirably brave. They threw their bodies in harm's way for the sake of the mission, and even pressed on in duty after suffering grievous wounds. Chip Hazard himself was no heartless bastard. He shed tears for those lost in battle and vowed to honor their deaths with valiance. Nick Nitro's battery has run out, but his memory will keep going and going and going. His death will be avenged. Hazard was also very progressive, allowing females to fight on the front lines while still maintaining a sense of chivalry. An officer and a gentleman does not strike a lady. Listen, the commandos after suffering significant losses to their ranks could have just ran away back to their warehouse. But for the sake of duty and in their minds to make the world a safer place, they returned to the battlefield to fight on to the last man. And while their mission might have been misguided, it's hard to not admire their courage. Anyways, it's beginning to rain. It's making lots of noise as I shoot this video. So that is the video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of my opinions. Um, subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell. 
For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.